Satnam, yogis and yoginis. Hello, hello, welcome back. One more part of this mantra course. This is part 12. It's been um, a long journey already. 12 parts, like the 12 months, yeah? And there's still a few more to go. We are going to ex keep exploring the sounds and the meaning of sounds. We are doing this now for every consonant. We've done it for the semivowels and we did it for the K, the K and the G. And today we're going to go into the next step, which is the CH and the J. CH, CH, J, J. CH, CH, J, J. Yeah? So let's uh, remember this is the map of the sounds in the body. And last week uh, we did this one in the last uh, part of this course. And today we're going to go CH, 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 J, J, N, Y. CH, 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 J, J, N, Y. Yeah? Corresponding to the palatals, palatal sounds. And um, these sounds vibrate in the upper chest, also around the arms, uh, because there is a certain connection between the arms and the upper chest, but there is also the connection with the arms with the chest. So this is mainly about the upper chest. And as uh, usual with this, uh, this section of the course, this part of the course, we're going to be guided by this book by Margaret Magnus, which I already talked a lot about. So uh, the description is below, as usual. Uh, let us go straight away and check what she has to say about these two sounds. Uh, it's nice that they are both in the same back-to-back, uh, -back with the, in, the, in the same pages. But we're going to start with CH. And uh, slowly, because I put so many, many comments here, and as we are, uh, uh, depending on which sound, we're going to study more in one aspect or another aspect. And uh, let's 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 go with the ch and the j. When we go to the t and the d, we're going to see much more detail about different constructions of words with different sounds. Let's see what we have for ch today. So, ch. It, this is a phonetic symbol. Uh, this is the phoneme. The sound of ch is represented like this with two bars and a and a capital C. This is usually, um, there's every sound that we produce has one symbol with these two bars. So this is a symbol for chewy and choppy. Yeah, this is saying it's chewy and it's choppy. And uh, chewy and choppy requires some effort. So there is an effort in, in the sound of ch. Uh, she says the texture hangs out with unvoiced consonants. So there's a certain texture to the sound ch, 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 ch. Ch changes form but not without a challenge. All right, let's stop for a moment. Changes form, but not without a challenge. Now, uh, remember that the fifth chakra, <clears throat> this is where words are produced and, uh, and the vibration creates a sound out there. And we studied from the very first part of this course where we talked about how sound creates form. So through our words, we can change form. We can change uh, the form even of material things out there, but uh, we can have an effect on our body. We can chanting, we can bring healing to our organs, and we can also, with our words, transform uh, our thoughts and our ideas and our beliefs and our objectives. Yeah, we can decide we want to change something and we are voicing it, we are saying it, and things change, right? So as we are coming down, because we are doing these consonants coming down from the throat to the upper chest, up, after crossing this five, something is getting transformed. We are seeing the journey down. Generally, we go up, especially when we look at chakras, but there is some energy going down. And this is the journey that we're going to be doing now, going down. And so coming down from the, thro the throat, there is this transformation which has had to cross through this filter of the fives. Remember, we talked about the five being the filter and the deciding whether we get or we give. You know? So there is this... Uh, kind of a point of crossing through the, th the five, the fifth chakra. And now on the other side, we, we had to cross this challenge, right? And so we are in, the, in this upper chest having faced this challenge and changing the form. It is pronounced the same as this symbol and semantically a combination of these two symbols, ch, ch, ch. So this T contributes a direction and this ch uh, expresses an environment or impediment that T must go through. So again, we are like going down and there is a certain direction. In this case, it's going down 
and we had to cross three. We will see, I don't want to say too much about this because we will see a lot about the letter T and the sound T when we go to the next uh, consonant. And, um, but, so let's carry on. But, um, okay, ah, there's another thing when it says about taking form, which is that uh, the, what is above us is unmanifested, is subtle, is like the ethers, is etheric, right? So, um, well, actually, the ether is related to the fifth chakra. So even above the fifth chakra is even more subtle than that. And as it, as it gets down into the body, it becomes more material. Uh, from the, this is like the ladder of subtlety, sometimes it's called, right? And the higher you go, the more subtle it is. The lower you go, the more real it becomes. Real in the sense that we can perceive it, not because the other was not real. It's just that uh, we want to believe what we touch, what we see, what we hear, what we, what we taste. And that can only happen through our five senses. So as we cross through the five, the fifth chakra, the senses start to happen start to be uh, present in us, yeah? The fifth chakra is the sense of hearing, and then as you go down, the fourth chakra is the sense of touch. So we are coming down and getting into our senses, and so everything becomes more palpable, yeah? We can touch it, we can feel it, and so it becomes more apparently real to us. It, it was already real before, but it was too subtle for us to perceive, unless we had some sort of intuitive perception of the sixth chakra. So. This is a, we're going down and it's becoming more real. So, um, there is an impediment that we must go through, and uh, this is important in a moment, uh, I will come back to that. The shattering of she splits the directness of T into choice or chance. Into choice or chance. So let me, let me put this in a different way. Let me express it in this way. We are entering the fourth chakra. Eh? We are still on the on the rim of this uh, of this cup of prayer. We call it the cup of prayer in the in the heart with, with this symbol of the mudra, the the open open lotus flower. And this is like a, we call it the cup of prayer. Means that prayer resides in here, and there is something within the cup. Yeah, you can also see the base of the cup almost down to the diaphragm, where the diaphragm becomes like a cup, right? And inside there would be our heart. So we are entering this cup from above. The upper chest is the entrance to this cup. And uh, so we are entering four, four being the heart, yeah? And the spiritual heart, yes? So I'm going to bring a little bit of numerology now. Uh, the, the more we go into sounds, the more I would like to bring numerology, but I want to separate the topics of mantra and numerology, and maybe someday in the future we'll explore sound from a more numerological point of view. But let's just say that the four, number four, as you, as you enter into number four, you are facing a crossroads. And when you face a crossroads, there is a challenge. Remember the word challenge, yeah? We have to choose choice. Uh, which way are we going to go? Yeah? Am I going to go this way? Am I going to go this way? I'm going to go this way. I'm not sure. I have to decide. We say that the heart needs to choose, not the mind, because the mind tends to react according to the patterns established in our own history, according to our experiences, uh, some beliefs, some values, some, some memories are established in, our, in ourselves, and those are going to condition my decision. So the decision is more like a reactive response rather than an actual conscious choice. And we associate consciousness with the fourth chakra, the heart, because breathing is operated from this chakra. Yeah? The lungs are connected to the fourth chakra. And breathing is the one autonomous function in the body that we can control consciously. So consciousness is associated to breath. Therefore, consciousness is associated to number four and the fourth chakra. So. What does this mean? It means that as we go into the heart, we have to choose that. We have to choose to breathe. We could do it unconsciously or we can do it consciously. And we are talking about conscious choice. And so now the words of Margaret Magnus when she says, splits the directness of the into choice or chance. So this is what I'm talking about. Uh, as we come into this crossroads, you have to choose or you have to chance it. Yeah? Which way am I going to go? And if you do chances, you leave things up to luck, 
right? <laughs> or maybe your karma. Uh, but um, the heart understands about destiny. The heart knows which is my path. and uh, It's kind of connected to the, the soul's call. So it's going to tell you which is the path towards your destiny. So it's, it's good to choose from the heart, as I said, not from the intellectual uh, reasoning. It, although we, we need to consider, we need to hear what the mind is saying, but the final choice should be from the heart. So this is the point of choice and challenge. So um, it's a challenge that if you overcome it, you become a chief and a champion. Yeah, the ch this is the the when the when you enter into the heart and you when you finally go through this this rim of the cup of prayer and you come inside the cup of prayer, you fall into your heart and then you are a chief and a champion. Remember always, falling into the heart, don't let the heart fall. Right. So this is about going down into this cup. And talking about the sound uh, ch. We have uh, an interesting uh, combination of sounds. If we combine ch with n, the n sound, and we're going to talk more about that in the future, next part, but let's just, uh, let's just bring it in this way. There is an aspect of n which is narrow, narrowness, yeah? Making things narrow. So connecting this narrowness with ch, ch being this directed pressure, Remember the chair is like chewy or choppy and it's ch -ch, we need to cross this throat. Then um, there's something about scrunching, munching, cinching, pinching, yeah, which is like, like narrowing but a directed pressure. So it's like becoming pressure together. So remember that uh, when you swallow food, yeah, it's, it has to go through the down the tacria, so you have to press it so it goes down from the throat down into this area of the upper chest and is coming down. And just to, just to compare it with another word like band, yeah, which is uh, the end with the D again. We will see the D in the next next part, but uh, compare it with bunch, yeah, very similar word band or bunch. And the difference is very subtle, but band is like joining together. And it's not necessarily like a big effort to do that. And then they want to stick together like a band of friends, right? A band of brothers. They can be like uh, a band of brothers. I think that's from a movie. I don't know why it came to my mind now, but uh, a band of friends, right? They, they get together and it's like a band. So uh, they want to stick together in some way. While bunch is like taking some things and making them stick together. So it's kind of what you are creating an effort. You are putting a pressure to get them together. So I find this interesting to uh, reflect upon why we say mulabanda and not mulabanch, right? Mulband, not mulabanch. So maybe mulband, because we generally, like we have to put a lot of conscious pressure, but actually there is a way to train yourself to make mulabandha almost natural and they become friends. The different areas of mulabandha, they can become friends, the different muscles. They just want to be active together and it starts to happen like um, effortlessly. So there is a way to train yourself with mulabandha to do this effortlessly. Okay, that's, uh, that's for another time, for another day. <laughs> if anybody is interested, you can you can uh, you can say it in the chat, and maybe I will do another video about this some other day. But uh, let's go back to this. We have so many things to cover. So uh, this was about the the ch sound. Let's see what Margaret has to say about the j sound. <clears throat> j is an edge, ledge, wedge, hedge, ridge, bridge. It is linear with steep sides. Now I, I draw a little cup here, so you can see the, the 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 rim of the cup is linear. It's a circle actually, but it's linear. It's a line, and there is steep sides on each side. You can fall into the cup or you can fall outside the cup. It lives very tenuously with the ever-present danger of falling into the abyss. Yeah, falling into a cup may be scary, falling into the depth of our heart may be scary, especially if in the heart we have pain and trauma. So we may want to avoid going into the heart, but then so we avoid also contacting 
uh, our heart's destiny, let's say. It has both the cut gems and the rejected junk. So the gems and the junk. And I don't know if you watch a video in which I was talking about Amrit and how as the Amrit descends, it mixed with, is mixed with the poison and we need to use the, 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 the throat uh, chakra, the fifth chakra, and particularly the tip of the tongue in the upper palate to filtrate the poison and only let the, the Amrit go in. So this mixture of Amrit and poison is kind of like what, when she's describing as the 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 gems and the junk so it has to be filtered the filtration is through the jalandarabanda yeah which is j jalandarabanda which is happening in the throat but is uh, between the throat and the next space which is the upper chest so it's right here is the gate towards this space here makes a lot of sense eh? if you if you read it in this way it contains the joke the jazz the jams jellies and other jiggly things it has only room for one at a time, and so it must juggle things and jockey for position. It jungles, has the jitters, and eventually jumps off the cliff. So, if you if you imagine like putting uh, like a funnel, yeah, and putting a lot of balls, and uh, they are gonna be competing to get inside, and you have to kind of shake it and move it so that they are shaking so that something goes in, right? So. Eventually, they will fall, as, as she calls it, jumps into the, off the cliff, jumps off the cliff, right? Uh, but uh, we have to jiggle things, we have to move things around. So there is a movement up here in the upper chest. And it's a lot, it's very emotional. Yeah? It's an it's a aspect that connects to um, a lot of emotions, so uh, feelings and emotions, actually. We will see more about this in the next uh, part of this course. The next part is going to be packed with stuff. Uh, but yeah, there is going to be a lot of things happening there. And so when you jumping into the cliff, uh, jumping off the cliff, this is like when we talk about the leap of faith. Yeah, going into the heart, it, you require a great degree of trust and, and uh, faith. There's two components, slightly different, but both are connected to this. Trust is something with a T and the R, S, T. So a lot of T sound. Maybe we will explore trust in the future video, in the next one. Uh, and, and faith is something that is uh, about this jumping off, yeah, jumping off the cliff, like jumping inside this cup of prayer, like allowing yourself to go into the prayer. It requires faith. You cannot pray without faith, right? Uh, she mentions also how it's very present in many names, like Joe, Jim, Janice, George, Jeff, Jason. Well, there's a lot of them. Uh, so names is interesting because it's connected to Nam. Name is Nam. And Nam is identity. And our true identity resides in the heart. This is the Sat Nam, yeah? Within our heart. And if we had to place the soul somewhere, we would place it in the heart. Yeah? We don't really know where the soul is, but if we had to locate it somewhere, it would be the heart. And the soul is what we call Jivan, J, G. So sometimes in, we say, oh, Satnam Ji, yeah? So it's G is like Satnam to your soul, right? Uh, let my soul go to your soul. My true identity relates from my soul to your soul. And that's happening in the heart. And in order for us to be, to do this and to connect to each other and salute each other from heart to heart, requires a leap of faith. So I hope you're seeing how these things are connected. Eh? So G, G, Ban, G, G, jumping, jumping off the cliff into this state of prayer. And uh, we have a few mantras that are very resonate very, very strongly with this. One would be a classic mantra like Om Shri Ram, J Ram, J J Ram. Uh, and that's, uh, if, you, if you look at the vibration of the sounds, we could identify how Shri, Shri is a sound, it's a compound sound, S and R together, uh, but we can, uh, you know that sounds can vibrate in many places, not only in these ones, like I said, this is like the most basic map, but then on, a, on different uh, layers of subtlety, we could say that some sounds may vibrate in other places, like the sound Sa, uh, it's definitely vibrating in the 
first chakra and the legs, but there is a saw which may connect to the third eye, for example. And Shri, Shri is a sound that vibrates in the third eye as well. And we can uh, we experience that vibration in the third eye when we are doing the, the long concar and we chant Ek Onkar Sat T Na Yeah, Sat Nam Siri. Wa he good, right? Ek onkar sat nam nam siri. So siri siri is third eye. So there is something about shri in the third eye, and then om shri ram ram third chakra. So from the third eye to the third chakra, om shri ram j j on the upper chest ram j j ram. Let's chant it a few a few times and. And have this experience. Om Om is Om Shri Ram J Ram J J Ram. So it's like on tan 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 tan. Calling on Ram Ram. Remember the sound of Ram is the sound of the sun. Yeah, Ram is like the sun. Calling the sun. So let's try that. Inhale. Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Feel it? Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram When we do Ramo and we separate Ram, like Ra and Ma, we are actually separating the sound Ra in the third chakra and Ma in the second. This is the belly, yeah? Ma vibrating in the lower belly. So it's like going even to the, the second chakra. But when we talk about the sun, also there is a certain light, which, by, which is like the whole body has a certain light, a radiance that is pervading the whole body. So sometimes you may feel it we are going down into Ram, but then sometimes it's like Ram, Ramo, and you can feel the light all throughout. See if you can experience it. Yeah? Om Shri Ram, J Ram, J Ram, Ram, <laughs> and going and expanding. Let's try it again. Michael. Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Hopefully you can start to feel these places as, as we chant them, how they vibrate. Though I want to remind, now that we are doing this, I want to remind everyone that at some point when we are chanting, we just let go. We don't need to understand where everything is vibrating and we just allow the vibration and just feel the joy and the bhakti, the devotion, right? Uh, and it's, um, this is very interesting and it, it 
may inform us uh, about what is happening with the mantra, but at some point we don't really need it, right? So we can just enjoy it. Let's just explore another mantra which also has the gist J sound very strongly, which is Wahiru, 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 Wahejio. Wahiru is a sound that resonates in quite a few different places and in different ways, as I was saying, in different levels of subtlety. But it's, let's say on one level, Wa, Wa is second chakra, He is Hum is fifth chakra, G is fifth chakra, and Ru is the third chakra. So it's Wahi, Guru, Wahi, Guru, Wahi, Guru, and then Wahi, and then we end up in Jio up here. So the very end of this whole pass is, is Wahi, Guru, Wahi, Guru, Wahi, Guru, Wahi, Jio. And we end up in this place of uh, entering into the cup of prayer. And let's do this with the hands on the upper chest. Let's try, let's try with this mudra to have this experience of Jio. Jio can remember G, Jivan, soul, yeah? Entering into the cup of prayer. Inhale. Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Jiyo, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Jiyo. Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Jiyo, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru. Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Jiyo, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru. The hands being so high up on the on the chest, very close to the the vocal tract where the the um, the faults yeah uh, for making sound vibrate uh, the vocal faults. Uh, this makes it so that sorry it's difficult to speak after medita <laughs> after chanting a mantra the brain has to engage again sometimes it's hard so the vocal falls vibrate when we chant the mantra and the hands being so high it's natural if you were feeling vibration all the time in the chest yeah in the hands sorry in the upper chest so it's um it's a, it's a subtle vibration this j and sometimes it's difficult to feel it when you are feeling so much vibration from every sound there would be other ways to experience why you do this other understandings of how vibra how does it vibrate, like wa being you could you could say it's second chakra and he is you could say vibrates in the heart because he, he is an aspirated sound and requires more air. So air stimulates the, the heart. So wa he and then guru sometimes is talked about chanting it like 
like a kiss in the wind, yeah? Like when we do this Kriya, yeah? Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, and we are kind of giving, yeah, Guru, Guru, like kisses into the wind, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru. So in the same way, you could say Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Jiyo, and Jiyo being the soul. So it's like giving birth to your soul in some way. It's just a beautiful metaphor to connect to sound and the meanings of sound. But for now, we will stop here. Uh, in the, the video is already long enough. Uh, on the next video will probably be even longer because we have super interesting things to cover with the, in relationship to the sound T, D and N. And we are going to explore a bit more some particular details. Like today we tried with this pinch what happens with the N and the CH. So tomorrow we're going to, uh, on the next uh, video, I mean, we will explore what happens with the T in relation to other sounds like the S, the R, and in the position of the T, it's at the beginning of the word, at the end of the word, in the middle of the word, and we will see how that changes the meaning of words and how is that going to have an effect on mantras and on your name. Now that we, I remember, I remind that all this work, you can apply it to your own name, so if you have a name that starts with a J or with a Ch, then you can um, see everything I mentioned in this video. You can take it as a reflection and meditate on that, see how it touches you. Uh, so far, I hope you uh, enjoy this uh, little part of the course, part 12. And if you have any comment, please write it down and like the video. If you are not subscribed and you won't keep on learning more about sound and letters, subscribe yourself. If you, if you hit the bell, you will get a notification when the new video comes up. And it also helps the channel because YouTube will understand that more people are interested. And so it will offer this video to more people. So I do this as a service for these teachings to come to many people. And I hope that uh, if you enjoyed it, please support it by liking it and, and sharing the, the video. And um, so far, that's it. Thank you very much. And until next time, Sanam.